Good morning, everyone. My name is Stacy Simpson. I am the Associate Director of Special Events for Medill, and I'm thrilled to welcome you all to our High School Journalism Live program. If I could please ask you all to mute yourself. We are getting some background sound, so if you're not on mute, uh, please click your mute button now. And um, I wanted to let you know we have guests from all over the world with us today. They're high school students and their advisors coming in to join us. And that's one of the best parts of, of being virtual is that we can reach so many more of you. So welcome to Medill. During our program, we do ask that you do stay on the mute and we will be collecting our questions through the chat down below. So please enter any questions you have and I will be reading those to Karen towards the end of our program. Also, at the end of our program, we will be selecting one of you participants this morning randomly from the list to receive a wonderful piece of Northwestern Medill swag and it's the Northwestern Medill baseball hat today. So uh, you need to be present to win at the end of our program. So don't click off too early. Um, one of you lucky winners will get that and we're doing that at, during each of our workshops. So please feel, feel free to register for more workshops for a chance to win something else. So without further ado, uh, oh, also in dimension, we are recording this session, so you will uh, get a link in a couple of days after the program. Um, we will send a link to everyone who participate, who joined us this morning, so you'll get a recording to look at other things. So you don't need to take notes if you want to refer back to that later. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our Associate Dean of Journalism, Beth Bennett. Good morning, Beth. Good morning. Thank you, Stacy, and welcome, everyone. Um, so uh, I want to just mention, you know, why we're doing this. Um, we love engaging with high school students around the world, um, in part because we want to help foster and grow and develop your interest in journalism, um, in part by providing you with tools and resources um, to do your own journalism and also hopefully some inspiration as well. Um, beyond that, if you're interested in studying journalism um, in college or when you graduate from high school, we really encourage you to look and see what's out there. If you're interested in Northwestern and Medill, we have a wonderful program. And what you're about to um, experience today in this workshop, in this class, is very similar to what our classes are like at Medill. Um, Professor Karen Ward, whom I've worked with for many, many years, is absolutely fabulous. And this is um, what one of the many things that she teaches. So what, what you'll see today is similar to, to what our students are learning now. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Medill, I'll post into the chat, um, or it looks like Stacy just posted into the chat, a link to where you can do a virtual session and learn more about Medill through an info session. If you are planning to apply this year, please keep in mind that the early decision deadline is coming up, it's November 1. So anyway, thanks so much for um, coming today. And without further ado, I would like to introduce my friend and colleague, Professor Karen Ward. Karen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Beth. Um, yes, and I wanna thank everyone for being here. It's great that you're all here. I am excited to um, be with you this morning and to show you some things that you can do for storytelling on your smartphone. But really, I, I would say this is also applicable to any device um, that you might have. I will go with the, oh, yes, I see Maddie uh, holding up the DSLR. So all of these techniques, all of the things that I'm gonna show you today um, are applicable over any device. Um, it's, it's applicable applicable now to your smartphone because we're doing more and more things on our smartphones. And I always go back to the old, very bad joke that says, you know, what's the best camera you have? Anybody know the answer? Pop in if you know the answer, the best camera you have. The one that you have on you. Yes, the one you have on you. I know it's a terrible joke, but it's true. It's the one you have on you. And these days, the one we have on us is our smartphone. Um, so here are some things that you can do um, and any, uh, any device, um, but certainly applicable to your smartphone. I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna um, optimize for video. So I won't necessarily see you um, and I'll, get this show on the road, let's see. Um, pop this down, bear with me. It's the, uh, 
the Zoom, Zoom technology intersection that always uh, delays things for a moment, but all right. So storytelling with your smart device. Before I start, I want, I want to say one thing to all of you as um, journalists uh, or budding journalists, um, always know who you're getting your information from. So I, I like to say, who am I to tell you about this, right? Um, if you're going to use a source, if you're going to use a source for information, whether it's for a story or to inform what you're doing, you should know what that source brings to the table. And are they able to tell you, are they speaking um, uh, about something that they have experience and knowledge to speak about? So I, I will tell you a little bit about myself before we get started so that you know who I am and what information that, um, and how that informs the information that I'm giving you. Um, I am a Medill, a proud Medill alum. As you can see, I don't know if you can read my, my pin, but I'm a proud, uh, Northwestern and Medill alum. I worked as a in TV news um, for a very long time. Uh, first as a reporter and as a producer, then I went to uh, middle management. I was a producer, executive producer, news director, managing editor. I worked at three television stations here in Chicago before coming full circle back to Medill. And I've been teaching here for um, 11 years. So that's my quick synopsis. That's who I am. And, and that's uh, kind of my experience that informs what I'm gonna tell you now. So um, just wanted you to keep that in mind. Always know the source of your information and who's giving you the information. All right, so let's get to it. That's not why you came. Storytelling with your smart device or any device. Oh, three simple things, right? But this is what we're gonna talk about this morning. Three simple things something called systematic shooting, editing to engage, and being up close and personal. I'm gonna explain what that means, so don't worry. That's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna explain each of those things and how they should inform your video storytelling, how they'll take your video storytelling, hopefully to a next level, professional level, um, as opposed to um, maybe a more amateur style, right? Um, okay, so systematic shooting, let's, uh, without systematic shooting, this is of course pre, uh, this video is a pre-COVID video, nobody is socially distanced or masked here, so I will just say that up front, all of the videos you're going to see today are pre-COVID, um, but this was of course shot with my smartphone. Um, and it's a class at Medill. And if I said to uh, somebody who had no video storytelling experience, you know, go shoot me um, with, your, I, with your phone, shoot the uh, class that's going on. And this is what you might, they might do because this is, you know, what, what, what we do. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is the, we, we went ahead. Ah, okay, here we go. This is what they might do. Yeah, please. Only check it out for right, now. just a shot the of the class. I said, uh, shoot me a little story, 30 seconds of the class. And that's it, you know, if, I, if you were shooting a birthday party, this is what you might do, right? Um, but when we add systematic shooting into the mix, we get a little bit of a different, a little bit of a different look to the video and maybe a little bit of a story to the video. So let's take a quick look at what that looks like. Yeah, All right, you get the idea, right? The first video was it, you know, it was the class, it did show the class, but it didn't really tell a story. It didn't really have any tight shots. The second video, same amount of time, 30 seconds, very quick, um, but you got a feel for the class. People were learning, people were enjoying. It was a much, much more um, professional looking 30 seconds than obviously the first one. So how did, how did that come about? And what, was, what techniques were used to make that happen? the techniques called systematic shooting. And what is it? What is it? It's a variety of shots. You always wanna take a variety of shots. So wide 
medium and tight shots, right? Always give yourself a variety of shots. Um, also, when you're thinking about the percentage of shots that you wanna take, you wanna take 50% of your shots tight. We want close-ups for detail, right? Tight shots, 50%. And then maybe 25% of your shots, medium or wide shots, right? We also shoot and edit to compress time and avoid jump cuts. What do I mean by that? And how do we do that, right? Maddie, you have a question. I see your hand is up. I, I don't have the full gallery up, but those in my screen, yeah, I can um, see, yeah. Yeah, like a jump cut is basically like a really, really drawing cut. You jump from like one scene to another, it's exactly what it is. And like you're saying, like a way you can kind of um, manipulate that is by shooting longer and actually just doing it in camera. So like push record, just count in your head, one, two, three, four, five, shoot for as long as you need. It's better than having to do editing, a ton of editing later. Yes, um, yes, a lot of that, you're, you're correct, Maddie, on a lot of that. Um, you, we call that editing in the camera and we do that. We do at, um, suggest that when you're shooting your shots, you shoot longer rather than shorter. So five to 10 seconds for each shot that you're shooting. When you go to edit those shots, you're not gonna use five to 10 seconds. You're gonna use maybe three to five seconds. Those shots in that little video I showed you were not 10 seconds long, any of them. They were all probably about two to three seconds long, if that. Um, but back to what a jump cut is, Maddie's correct. It's very jarring. And it's when you, we are, we are compressing time, right? So if we're watching a basketball game, we're doing highlights of the basketball game. The game goes for two hours and we're not going to show all two hours. So we have to take out the things that um, highlight. That's why they call it highlights. We take out the things that highlight what happened in the game. Um, but when we do that, you know, we're taking non-consecutive portions of the video and putting them together. And that leads to what's called a jump cut. I'm gonna show you um, some commercials that represent where jump cuts are used on purpose. And, but I think it's a really good and quick way to illustrate it because I can talk about it all I want, but until you see it, it's a little difficult to grasp the concept if you've never seen it before. So let me, I think you may not see this video. If I, I'm gonna stop my share for a second, let me put this up. Well, let me go to it first and then uh, let's see. Okay, can you see the video or no? You still seeing the PowerPoint? No, we're still seeing the PowerPoint. Yeah, okay. Let me stop my share and I will start a new share so that you can see that. Give me a second. Again, I'm navigating my Zoom, uh, Zoom technology. All right. Look at this. I think I'm a free man. Does everybody see the E-Trade babies? Okay, good. Um, let me put in full screen. And then I will stop and show you the uh, jump cuts that the E-Trade baby um, does. I go anywhere I want now and trade. E-Trade Mobile Pro. Oops, did you see it? Let's see. Let's go back a little. E-Trade Mobile Pro. Okay, right back. on my Blackberry. Oh, oh, wait, yeah, get an email. Oh, a bad girl. Man. Anyway, you know, I can get streaming quotes on it. God, really. Did you see it? There's a little bit of the action that was cut out there and the baby jumped because it's one shot on the baby. It's the same shot on the baby the whole time. And so if you take something out and it's not consecutive and you edit that together, you're going to get a jump because the baby's not in the same place and it's not consecutive. Watch again. Relentless. Hang on a sec. Hey, hey girl, can I hit you back? We trade Mobile Pro. Trade stocks, get streaming quotes anytime, anywhere. There are a thousand new accounts a day at E-Trade. Let's see if we can get some more E-Trade babies. That wasn't a great one. Okay, let's see if they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> She's got this big tattoo. That uh, says, hey guys. Uh, Melody Hobbs. So what's popping, babe? I'm so glad you could take some time for me today. I've got to do this presentation on stocks versus bonds, and I'm really curious about how you guys would explain it. Uh, totally pleasured. You know, it's funny. I, I think the last time we saw each other was we were at that party. I think you look so pretty. You see it? 
You see the jump from to the next baby, right? So that was not in consecutive. I'll show one, uh, I'll keep going for a little bit, but then we'll go back. Pretty. Big brown eyes. Why, thank you, Benny. That's very, very sweet. She knows my name. Okay, why don't you start by telling me what is a stock? All right, check it. A stock is a share in a company. Yeah. There it was. Did you see it? Okay. All right. So you guys get the idea. I'm going to uh, let's see. stop my share, go back to the PowerPoint. Okay, everybody can see the PowerPoint now, right? Um, so that's what a jump cut is. And we're gonna shoot and edit to compress time without those jump cuts. The E-Trade baby uses it as a device. We're not gonna use it as a device. We don't, we don't um, need jump cuts because we're gonna be able to compress time without them with some simple techniques. So you should know why you're using what shot, right? The, we use different shots for a reason. We said wide, medium, and tight shots. So the wide shot is, always establishes the scene and shows us the scale of things. Gives us, um, establishes the scene, takes us into the place. Medium shots draw us in a little bit more and give us some context. And then the tight shot gives texture and detail. You always want to get close, but you don't want to use your zoom on your phone. Does anybody, uh, anybody chime in if you know why not to use the zoom on your phone? It's very, very, very shaky. And it's also really rough when you try to zoom in. Yeah, and it's, it, it, that's true. When you zoom in, any movement looks like an earthquake, right? So you want to avoid that. You want to avoid the shakiness. But also, it's a digital zoom, not an optical zoom. So, um, you know, Absolutely. that it gives, makes it pixelated when you zoom in. It's not good quality. So you're better off just getting close. And it may seem weird that I, you know, come up to somebody and go, hey, you know, I'm going to stick this in your face. Don't mind me. Right. Um, but you get used to it because it's your job and people understand. And if you're transparent with them, they will they will understand. And that will be after a while, they won't even notice that you are very close to them with your camera. Um, I don't know if we have any um, still photographers in the group. But um, the same kind of rules to, yeah, I see we have at least one. Um, the same rules of composure, uh, the way you would compose your um, still shots, the rule of thirds, juxtaposition, framing, using light and shadow, um, you know, some of the other techniques that you would use, leading lines, all those things that come from photography transfer and can be used in your video to make your shots artistic and creative and interesting. And you wanna do that for sure. And of course, you can do all that with this, right? Um, so as I mentioned, when you're editing, you wanna engage people with whatever video, obviously, that, that, that you're showing them, right? So you wanna keep your shots short. So as I said, you're gonna shoot 10 seconds worth of a wide shot, but you're never going to use 10 seconds worth of a wide shot. You can establish that scene in three seconds. Um, you want to keep your story moving, right? People have a short attention span. You want to keep the pace of the story moving. So when you're editing, you want short shots. You want to vary the visuals um, and that will be more engaging, right? Than one long shot as we saw with the before and after video, right? Um, also think about a beginning, middle, and end to the story. What visually signals the beginning? What visually is your middle and what visually is your end, right? How are we, how are we um, building a story arc visually by editing oh, and with your natural sound and your sound bites? Um, when I say, if your shots are in two locations, keep each location together. Don't ping pong back and forth if you can, 
you know, it may not, and not every story is the same and it may not work, but if you can try not to ping pong back and ping pong back and forth between location, but also day and night. So if you're shooting something and the light is changing or you are, go back on a different day, try to keep them separate and try not to ping pong back and forth between day and night as well as one location or another location. Um, again, compress time, but avoid jump cuts. How do we avoid jump cuts? We have cutaways. Does anybody know what a cutaway is? Maddie, you wanna tell us what a cutaway is? Yeah, so a cutaway would be, so what you're doing is you're cutting from one action to a similar action. So say like I'm drinking my, like say I'm like, like I'm walking down the street. Obviously, you don't want to film me just walking down the entire block. But what you can do is you can you can cut to me stopping at a corner, at like the next corner. So you you're still have me on that street. You're just not you know just shooting an entire like an entire twenty seconds of me just walking down the street. Kind of okay. Let's let's put a pin in the walking down the street because we're going to use a different device for cutting out action walking down the street. We can use a cutaway for that um, sequence where we don't want to show the whole time you're walking down the street, but we might want to show you at the beginning and we might want to show you at the end. So a cutaway would be cutting away from the action. So the main action is somebody walking down the street. If we were to cut away to um, uh, a bus stop where people were waiting on that street and then cut back to that person in a different place, that would avoid the jump cut if we took out the middle of that video. Does that make sense? Cutting away from the action. So if we were shooting um, a basketball game, we'll go back to the basketball game analogy, and we were shooting the action on the court, that's our main action, what would a cutaway be? What, what could we cut away to? Does anybody know? Anybody have an idea? Shout it out. The crowd maybe? Yes, the fans, absolutely. The fans are one cutaway. Can anybody think of another cutaway at the basketball game? The scoreboard? The scoreboard, yes. Anybody else? Newsroom. So, um, in, a, in a newscast, that might be the cutaway from, yes, to the newsroom, but I'm thinking at the game specifically. So we have the fans, we have the scoreboard. Um, you could cut away to the bench, to the coach, to the um, guys on the bench. Uh, you could cut away to, um, uh, I'm trying to think what else is that, you know, if they have banners hung from the ceiling, like sometimes they do, those type of things are all cutaways. That's what I mean by cutting away from the action. Um, cutting into the action, cutting into the action is a similar way. So if I'm at the sink and I'm washing dishes and you're doing a video about me washing dishes, which I think would be really boring, but okay, we'll just do that for now. I'm washing dishes at the sink. You might have a medium shot of my hands um, scrubbing the dish, right? Um, but then you wanna use it as the dish is finished and me putting it in the dishwasher. One way to do that is to cut into my face because I'm looking down where my hands are not in the shot right? You're cutting in to my face, but you're also cut, the action is my, uh, is my hands. And then when you come back to that medium shot where my hands are in the shot, they do not have to be in the same position. They don't even have to be scrubbing still. They can be over to the side, putting something onto the dish rack. Does that make sense? So you can cut in for a second or two and cut back to the action in a different place. You can cut away for a second or two and cut back to the action in a different place. And there, that's how you're compressing time. All right, that's a big concept and let, and let it sink in for a minute, right? This is all to avoid jump cuts and to compress time because those are two main goals, right? Okay, another device is called into and out of frame. So we'll go back to the walking down the street um, video that we want to take. And we have somebody walking, you know, a long way down the street, but we really just want to show them walking 
starting the journey down the street and ending it at the corner at the bus stop. And we don't have um, two minutes or three minutes to get them there. So we're not gonna follow the action, right? We're, we're not gonna have our camera on them at the beginning and as they walk, follow them, follow them, follow them. No, that's not what we're gonna do because that's not efficient and that's not gonna work for our purposes of compressing time or avoiding jump cuts. Instead, what we're gonna do is keep our camera still and we're gonna shoot the beginning of the, of the street that they're walking. So we're gonna have them walk into this frame on the street. So they walk into our frame and as they're walking, our camera doesn't move. So they walk out of the frame. And then we run to the corner at the bus stop to get there before they get there, right? And they once again walk into the frame and there's our shot. Now, when we go to edit, we can have them walk in, walk out. That takes about three to five seconds and we can pick them up when they walk in to the very end of the journey. So it, we've, we've now taken about six seconds, five or six seconds to show the walk down the street that in real time probably took five or six minutes. And there's no jump cut because we have them going out of the frame and coming back in at a different point. So it's, it's kind of where your mind fills in that blank and it's not jarring. It's a very smooth transition um, to compress time. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Are there questions about any of the systematic shooting that we've talked about? The jump cuts, the wide, medium, tight shots, the editing to engage, the um, techniques to avoid compressing time. Right? Should we take questions on that now? Anyone hit, wanna raise their hand or put it in the chat? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead Tor. So when you're doing this, say if you're just doing it on like one individual, like where you said they're walking down the street. So do we have to like reshoot that scene if we want to get multiple shots or do you get it in that one? The so multiple you, shots yeah, one? you're not going to reshoot that scene, right? Because as journalists, we want to show reality as it happens and you can't always shoot um, a sequence of wide, medium, and tight shots in real time, can you? you? That would have to be very quick. So you're gonna get the shot that you get um, for that and use those shots. Maybe it's a medium to wide shot, right, of this person. If the street is long enough and you can catch them in the middle, maybe you get a tight shot of their feet or and a tight shot of their face as they're walking to use as cutaways or cut-ins. Um, but you're going to have to determine that on the scene. How much time do you have? Um, what you really want is the beginning and the end. And you just want to make sure you're set up at the end um, to get there. So you, you probably have to move pretty quickly to get yourself from one place to the other. And you're not going to get all those three wide, medium, and tight shots. However, when you have repetitive action, such as an individual who's um, lifting weights in a gym, so that's a repetitive action, right? Up and down, up and down, up and down. That you can move around and get a bunch of different shots, a bunch of different angles, lots of different perspectives because it's the same action over and over and over again. Hopefully they do it more than once or twice, right? Um, hopefully they're there for a while and getting in a good workout and doing the rep, reps. Um, so that's a case where you want to get all, as many shots as possible. Um, and then when you go to edit, you can match those shots. And we call that matching the action. It's not listed here, but um, it's another technique that you can use to, um, to compress time and avoid jump cuts, matching the action. So if you have a wide shot of me lifting weights, and then you want to go to a medium shot of me lifting weights, if your wide shot ends with my hands up here, where's the medium shot gonna start? With the same position. Same position with my hands right here. 
so that it matches. That's why we call it matched action. Okay, good, good question. We have any others? Yeah, Rose wants to know, does cutting away relate to fading out of a scene and fading into a new setting? Oh, good, um, good question, Rose. Um, in journalism and especially starting out, I don't allow any fades or dissolves because fading and dissolving can become a crutch to avoiding jump cuts, right? And I want my students to be able to cut cleanly from scene to scene to scene and to think about how to do that and to know these techniques. I would say the only reason to fade is to fade or dissolve is to, is to have an editorial reason for that. So what's the editorial reason behind fading and dissolving? Does anyone know what an editorial reason might be to fade or dissolve? I think you said it in the question, Rose. Um, oh, um, isn't to fade and dissolve? To fade, it's because you're introducing a new setting into the storyline. So you yeah. kind of fade out one scene and go into the next. So yes, when you're changing location, you can fade or dissolve to the new location. Um, changes in time. If I had, um, if I were talking about somebody and I wanted to show a picture of them, you know, from the past, I still photo of them when they were a child, I might fade to that still photo, right? Might fade and dissolve to that to show the change in time. So a change in location or a change in time uh, to signify uh, and, that, and that fade and dissolve would signify that and those are editorial reasons. That's what I mean by editorial reasons. You'll see a, maybe um, some stories where they use a dissolve in between every edit. Um, but I, I don't think that's good practice. I don't think that's best practice. All right, how are we doing? Oops, what happened here? Why did this come up? All right, let's continue on then, I think. Uh, let's see. Okay, here's where I was. Um, so here's a quick video. Um, this was made by a student starting out. Um, and I think it shows some of the things that we talked about. I think you'll see a variety of shots. Um, I think you'll see uh, editing and shooting to compress time. So let's take a quick look at it. Um, I just wanna watch my time here. I'm Anthony Valdez. I work at the Unicorn and I've been here for two and a half years or so. So the first part of making a latte is to start with really good coffee. You grind your coffee into the portafilter, which is the little thing that hooks onto the machine, then level it out. Um, and then you attach the portafilter to the machine and start the water. And then you uh, have your milk um, in a steaming pitcher. You put the milk in the pitcher on the steam wand. Once your milk's hot enough, pour your shots into your cup. You start by pouring your um, milk into your espresso, sh espresso shots. And then you start making your design. Um, and that's pretty much how you make a latte. Okay, so that was about a minute, minute and a half, I think. It doesn't say on the screen, but the, I, anyone who's made a latte knows it takes a little bit longer than that. Did you see the um, use of the variety of shots? There were wide shots, medium shots, lots of tight shots, a little bit of uh, matched action, some cutaways right at the beginning to the collectivo sign. Um, so I think all of the devices that we talked about, or most of them were in that short little video. So um, any questions about that, how, how it's done? Okay, good. All right, so let's talk about um, the third prong of, of what we're here today to discuss, and that is up close and personal. So I think video stories, I, I think video storytelling is a very intimate, 
and personal kind of storytelling. Um, we are seeing people, we're hearing them, we're invited into whatever it is they're doing that is um, worthy of our story. Um, so I think that is how um, video storytelling works best. You can have a, a print story about um, mortgage rates going up and it can be a broad overview of mortgage rates going up, but a video story about mortgage rates going up, I think is uh, much better told through the eyes of somebody who's having to deal with their mortgage rate going up, right? So it's a, it's a little more up close, it's a little more personal um, and that's the way it works best. And for that, you need a few things. You need strong characters, right? Um, not everybody makes a strong character in a, for a video story. So when you're looking for sources, when you're looking for that person who is um, dealing with their mortgage going up, I'm going to look for somebody who, um, you know, is animated, who is um, articulate, who is clear, you know, speaks clearly and um, has a personality. It may take me a while to find the right strong character, um, but it's worth looking at um, different sources to find the best one. Just as you would look at different sources to find the best source for a print piece, you wanna find the best source for your video. And that's gonna be someone who's strong and has a personality and who is articulate and all those good things. Um, you know, a reveal or a twist. Good storytelling always has a reveal or a twist, right? Um, so if I'm looking at a family and they're dealing with the mortgage going up, the reveal or the twist in the middle of the story might be, oh, and by the way, um, his wife works as a mortgage broker. Oh, right? So they're probably getting the best rate of anybody. So that might be a reveal or a twist in that story. And then we look for conflict or tension, right? So all good storytelling, you know, are, are not, hey, everything's rosy, everything's coming up roses. And, you know, this is a, a great, great thing. There's always some conflict or tension. Even if everything's coming up roses now, there was probably some struggle to get there, right? So dig deep in your reporting and get and find that conflict or that tension or that struggle that people can relate to. Um, and then, you know, different than a print story, we spread the facts throughout. And in, in a print story, you might have the who, what, when, where, why, and how all in the summary lead, all in the lead sentence. And we would never do that um, in video storytelling. We sprinkle sprinkle the facts. You still want all of that in there, who, what, when, where, why, and how, all that should be in there, but it's, it's not clumped in the beginning of the story. It's spread throughout the narrative arc of the story. Questions about that? That's a lot. But it's important. So when you think about what would make a good video story, whether you're shooting it on your smartphone, um, oh, I just realized I can make it disappear. Look at that, um, <laughs> my virtual background. <laughs> That's funny. Um, okay, so whether you're shooting it on your smartphone, your DSLR or professional camera, you know, think about your video story and how you can make it up close and personal with somebody and how you can make it intimate and uh, relatable to the audience, right? Um, this is another story that a student did. Um, I don't believe this was shot on a smartphone, but I think it could have been. It was done with, I will say, it was done without any dollies or that you might think would be used any special equipment. This was just, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll play it and we'll talk about it afterwards. It's a little bit long. Let me see if we have time. Um, I may not play the whole thing for you, but um, we'll play a little bit of it and then we'll talk.
for us, it's about living as awakened of a state as you can be. We really try to just throw ourselves into experience, become one with it, embrace it, and your life becomes more seamless, more effortless. You kind of go with the flow more. are so nice in the entree section. My name is Ben Smith. I grew up in Chicago, about to be 29 years old. Uh, my job um, is being a waiter at this nice restaurant. I'm a resident here at the Chicago Zen Center. Been here now for oh, about four years or so. It's hard to tell a story about that on some level. I, I guess I just found that this is kind of just the way I roll. It's just kind of natural for me to fall into practice. You know, I, I was just, in college and I was kind of anxious, a little bit depressed, going through one of those whole what does it all mean kind of episodes. I couldn't paper it over anymore with distractions. I really needed to get down to it to really figure it out. Eventually you picked up um, this one book by Thich Nhat Hanh and read it and boom, immediately something made a lot of sense to me there. I was like, oh wow, I've never you know, read anything about this that explains life in this way. It just, it just seemed so right like that, you know? But then you get to a point where you've realized that all you've been doing is reading about practicing, but not practicing yourself. And so there's always a point at which you have to just make that leap from ideas well, to reality, or from like, you know, talking about it to actually doing it. The big leap is really making it to like a center like this where there's a real practice. What we offer here is a place where people can practice Zen meditation. So this is very much an American form of Zen Buddhism. What, what I think is attractive is it doesn't require a lot of theory. Uh, what it does is require a commitment to practice, that one um, engage in meditation. And that's it. It's really, really simple. Um, we are really short on theory. We don't talk a lot about this. I mean, if people have questions, we'll answer them. But at the end of the day, we always come back to the, the point of, we'll come and practice. We practice because we're looking for transformation. And so we can read a thousand books and we can debate theory for the rest of our lives. That does not change our lives. Our practice in Japanese is called Shikantaza. Just to let all that stuff, all that imaginary stuff, that, those stories and everything, just let that settle out. If you let that settle, it clarifies. I mean, you're, you're able to see. That's the heart of Buddhist teaching, is how do we um, practice? How do we see the, the rise of our emotions, our senses, our skandhas, and how do we see them dissipate and move on? Zazen is enlightenment. It is our practice. The technique's fairly simple. You know, you sit still, um, you know, back straight, hands in your lap. You know, you follow your breath, try to center it on that. If a thought comes, you bring it back, that kind of thing. But what happens is anything but that, at least at first and even after meditating for years, because you know, we're thinking all the time, all the time, all the time. Um, one Zen teacher, I can't remember who it was, um, said thoughts are like the secretions of the mind, just how like a stomach secretes acid, for example. It's just what the brain does. You can keep it there for a little bit of time, but then all of a sudden, boom, it goes off. What you have to do is say, oh, I went off, bring it back to the breath. Slips away again, oh, bring it back. Slips away again, bring it back. Um, and the mind can be very tricky. For example, you're sitting there and all of a sudden, wow, you're in a deep, nice, focused stage. But then, I don't know, a fire engine goes by and all of a sudden you think, oh, a fire, wow, I wonder where that is. My, my uh, neighbor's house caught on fire that one time. He went to Northwestern University. Oh, Northwestern's football team just got a new coach, right? All of a sudden you are so far from being focused in the moment on the breath. And you don't even see this happening because you're so used to thinking that it just takes you on this ride, you know?
the idea is. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. I, I, it goes on for a little bit more. It's a long piece, but um, what did you guys see from what we talked about? What did you see in this piece? Did anybody want to say say if they saw any of the techniques? What did you see? Um, well, I noticed a lot of like the shot changing. I think it had a pretty good percentage wise of different shots. And like, I know you talked about that a lot, like 25% long shot and then 50% close ups. Yes, exactly. A lot of different shots, a lot of close ups that opening sequence before the title came in. Um, I you know, started on super extreme close-ups, his ear at one point, um, very close up, but immediately brought you in, even if you didn't have the um, establishment of the scene. The establishing shot came way into the piece. So, you know, what I think a, a good takeaway from this is, you don't have to establish the scene right away. You can draw people in with some tight shots, with some, um, interesting details and then um, get that establishing shot. What else did anybody see? Did you see? Um, I noticed, I know that we're mostly speaking about visuals, but I really liked how they were using, I don't know what it's called, but like the ding sound throughout the entire piece. Um, using that from the jump, I realized that it was uh, also grabbed the audience attention. I also felt very zen listening to it. So yeah. it was just, you know, and um, I just like how they use it throughout the whole thing as a like a constant theme and really yeah. demonstrating like the calming effects of that method. Yeah, it um, underscored and kind of um, emphasized everything that he was talking about or when, when a scene would change, it would start with the banging. When we went to the other uh, bald headed guy, I can't remember his name, but um, it started with the bing, bing, bing. So it was a signal, an audio signal to the audience. Okay, we're changing gears a little bit here and um, acted as a transition. It can act as natural sound is uh, really important in that way because it underscores, it emphasizes and it transitions. So good point, really good point. And yes, the pacing of this story was very Zen. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else have anything? Um, you, Carla, what's that? Uh, like you were saying with the different scenes, um, pretty much like when he was in the restaurant and then when they had the other people, those kind of stayed in the same place and then it came back to him in that main um, place that he was in. Yeah, exactly. Um, it was a little surprising when we found, saw him in the restaurant, you know, I might call that the, the um, twist or reveal. Oh my God, he's a, he's a waiter, which I didn't expect. You know, not the hugest um, twist or reveal, but still um, a little bit of a, oh, I didn't see that coming, right? And then did you see the struggle and the tension? He talked about, you know, I, what, what led him to um, the Zen Center and that was, you know, he was in a place in his life where there was kind of conflict and tension and he didn't know, you know, what to do. And then he discovered this. So there's a little bit of that um, in there. I think he was a very strong character. He was articulate. He had a good story to tell. And he um, kind of represented what the Zen Center was all about. I thought he was a good, strong character. And then the supporting cast around him um, were the other people at the center that talked about the Zen Center itself. Um, did you notice any jump cuts? Anybody? It's not a trick question. No, no, there really were none. Um, and therefore it was very smooth. Of course, in this story, especially, you want it to be smooth and calm and you know, all of the editing and all of the visuals matched kind of the tone and the feel and the pace of the subject matter all came together, right? All of it came woven together into this um, 
very nice piece. So um, that's all I have for today. If there are more questions in chat, um, I'm gonna stop my share and then Stacy can, um, I can answer any other questions that you might have. If not, I know there's some very important swag to give away. <laughs> any questions, anybody? We kind of took the questions as we went along, so. Yeah, all right. Well, I just want to thank Karen very much for that enlightening uh, uh, information. I learned quite a bit and I think I'll take different images on my, on my phone, even though I'm not a big video producer. Um, uh, oh, here's a here's a question. Any resources to use like applications for editing editing videos? Um, I well, I'll, I'll tell you. Of course, my um, I, I use um, Premiere Pro on my laptop. Um, that's what we use at Medill um, for free. I see that I see the chat says for free, and for free, I, I like DaVinci Resolve. Again, that's a laptop application, but that's also very, very good and very much like Premiere. You can do all the same things. But um, I would also say, you know, probably a lot of you have used iMovie, right? That's also a good application and you can do what you need to do with iMovie. Um, I think that's fine. Um, for the phone, um, there's a few different applications you can find. Um, Clips, I think, is was um, Adobe's um, foray into phone editing. Um, it's okay, um, but I, I, you know, I, I would prefer uh, uh, whenever possible to edit on the laptop. Um, what's the next question? There's another question. Um, Have you ever seen the movie Tangerine, which was filmed only on an iPhone? Yes, yes, I have. And everybody, I would, Rose, I, good, good point. Um, it was filmed only on an iPhone with a lot of supplemental equipment to go with it. But, you know, um, it was done on an iPhone for sure. And I would recommend everybody take a look at it because it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And you can do beautiful things on an iPhone. So, um, and yes, and DaVinci is really good for um, color grading and lighting, but um, they're, they're foray into, uh, into the um, editing space is very good as well. Uh, yeah, I would highly recommend DaVinci Resolve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. Well, I'm, I'm pleased to say that uh, our lucky winner today is Sonia Patel. Is, I think Sonia, are you still here, I hope? Uh, anyway, she will be getting our Medill baseball hat and she comes from college uh, Station, Texas. So congratulations on that. And I want to again, thank you, Karen, and thank you all for being with us. Uh, please, we do have a number of programs still left in our series this fall. You can just go to the Medill website to find the links to those uh, ways to register. And as I said, in a couple of days, as soon as we add captioning to the recording on this for accessibility, we'll send a link directly to you with the recording. So thanks all for being here today and have a terrific rest of your day. Bye everyone, thank you. Have fun shooting and editing. <laughs>
I mostly do narrative stuff, but in like stop motion and stuff like that. Cool. But yeah, I've always I've always had a camera on me. <laughs> when people when people make that when people make that joke, I'm like, I have a Canon T6i on me. That's the camera I have on me. Well, then that's the best <laughs> camera you have, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm actually going to probably be going UWM, I think. Okay, also school. a good school. Yeah, yeah. also a good school. Study film there. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, Stacey. Thanks for joining okay. us. Thanks, Matt. See you guys Bye. later.